This dance film concert was inspired by the study of fashion trends. A great deal of this concert was based on research and writing that was composed at home during online learning days. The pandemic brought a haunting sense of isolation that left us thinking deeply about our identities, style, modes of self-expression, diminished without a community to respond to it. We felt it relevant to build a concert that studied this relationship between culture and self-expression. Each work dives into how our bodies are empowered, decorated, exploited, policed, and described by the trends of given moment throughout time. Fashion, in this context, is defined by its direct reaction to the socio-political climates from which it is derived. The way in which we dress, posture, gesture, and express our bodies comes in the form of cultural messaging and is pressed upon us without our conscious awareness of its power. Each piece stands as a study rather than a finished composition. Enjoy the show. This dance is inspired by Isadora Duncan, an American modern dance pioneer who was among the first to raise interpretive dance to the status of creative art. The skirts and dancers move together accentuated by the timeless pendulum-like motion of the fabric, water, and movement. Clothed cognition is a term that relates to the effect in which clothing has upon a person's mental process and the way they think, feel, and function in areas like attention, confidence, or abstract thinking. Science says that the clothes we wear affect our behavior, attitudes, personality, mood, and even the way we interact with others. Thus, enclosed cognition can make room for positivity, but also can breed toxicity. Women have grown to be objectified, sexualized, and oppressed through the form of clothing. Men tend to dictate this paradigm. Historically, clothing reinforces a male's masculinity and authority. Society has found a way to empower men and to oppress women, all through the means of garments, textiles, and aesthetics. The idea of a uniform, a badge, a benchmark for authority, 
that fortifies the fundamental system in which gives rise to some, and by default suppresses and others. And by default suppresses, and by others. suppresses, and by default suppresses others. others. A benchmark for authority. The concept of toxic masculinity is used in academic and media discussions of masculinity to refer to certain cultural norms that are associated with harm to society and to men themselves. Police brutality is the excessive and unwarranted use of force by law enforcement. It is an extreme form of police misconduct or violence and is a civil rights violation. A uniform, a badge, as a visible form of violence. A uniform, a badge, as a visible form of authority. A uniform, a badge. A uniform, as a, a badge, as a visible form of dominance. A uniform, a badge, as a visible form of authority. A uniform, a badge, as a visible form of authority. A uniform, a badge, as a visible form of authority. A uniform, a badge, as a visible form of authority. A uniform, a badge, as a visible form of dominance. Marie Antoinette lived in France in the second half of the 18th century, during the guillotine. Citizens of the time wore red choker necklaces to show their support of the execution of women who misbehaved. This practice, in addition to other symbols of beheading, can be seen in this piece. This piece explores the fashion of the 1810 English Regency era. The outfits mirror that of the 19th century undergarments, contrasting outer expectations of women in society with their inner hidden emotional expression.
America in the 1920s liberated men and women from a variety of backgrounds to come together to explore new identities and use self-expression, dance, and fashion to build a more integrated culture. Women freed themselves and their bodies from previous societal fashion standards. This dance draws from the shared core elements of fashion, movement, music, and visual art to build a composition that spoke to the interconnectedness of self-expression, fashion trends, and public art. This dance aims to manipulate the fundamental compositional structure of all art forms at the same time.
Like a game of telephone, fashion trends spread from person to person, styles are created outside of the status quo, and solidified in a mainstream world, brought together as a mosaic, combining many parts of history and corners of culture into one. Old clothing becomes vintage, men's clothing becomes women's, and items specific to one community are suddenly worn by all.
Societal trends are cyclical, an attempt to break apart from cultural expectations is, often in actuality, a return to an existing style. Every new trend is a result of rebellion, and every trend becomes obsolete as it becomes normalized. We are simply restarting a cycle. These trends are inescapable as they largely dictate our collective individuality and sense of expression. Although individuality, like history, is multifaceted and sometimes even contrasting, the backbone of technique in dance is enlivened by those who use it. The stories of each individual are what make dance come to life. When you look at this dance, what, or who, do you see? The color, movement, setting, and energy in this piece reflects the fashion of the 80s and 90s hip-hop, which was colorful, big, sporadic, and bliss. Hip-hop stemmed from the coming out of darkness and difficult times. This piece serves as a sign of hope for the future and the joy we find within each other. Since the 1920s in America, hip-hop immersion has consistently evolved. 
The communal activity of street dance integrates dance styles from all cultures and backgrounds into one moment of joy and physicality. This street dance piece embodies every performer's own style of dress and movement to emphasize how eclectic, self-expressive, and individual dance can be. The fashion industry continues to tokenize and exoticize non-white cultural fashion. Items of clothing often affiliated with a certain group's sacred identity are turned into exotic and sexy images, placing stereotypes and appropriating culture for corporate retail gain. Both fashion and movement cannot be owned as it is simply a reaction to the community of which it is a part. I am not a monolith. I am a microcosm. I am not a reassurance. I am a reality of the flaws you paint over with your white guilt, of the reasons you come up with to prove you aren't part of the problem, of a life you have never led. I am my own home, but only because no one else will let me into theirs. I try to make a choice between the places that could welcome me and mold myself into something they consider familiar. So I force myself in because I have nowhere else to go. I wash myself over with a culture that is not my own, where I now must belong. Now everyone around me looks the same and sometimes I forget I'm the odd one out until I receive a painful reminder of the person I used to be, the person they believe I still am. And no matter how far I stray from myself, I will never be what anyone else needs me to be. This piece is about COVID-19 and the self-reflection that occurs when we are faced with ourselves for a long period of time. What we wear is a reflection of our personal preference only in relationship to the community norms which we are a part of. If we are dressing for ourselves rather than the public, who are we and how might we develop our identity to represent our true selves rather than the norms of which we are a part? A star may belong to a galaxy, but no galaxy belongs to a single star. No constellation may be composed without the tracing of its celestial beads.
Yet how does that grow to be anything but futile when the taut string intertwining them spontaneously fractures? Okay, whenever you're ready. The thing about dance is that it thrives off of connection. Moving in sync with other bodies, breath, song, and energy, forming a collective whole, a community. When you take away the connection, that combined energy from of dancers. You're left with only yourself, and it hardly feels like there's anything at all. The once connected movement feels meaningless when it's just you, yourself, and the wall you run into every time you try to turn. When you're left alone in your bedroom with only yourself, when everything's stripped away, it doesn't take long for your motivation, for the reason you move, to fade along with it. That moment, the one where human connection dissolves, forces you to figure out who you are. Without the presence of anyone else, with only your thoughts to guide you, there lies an obligatory self-discovery. You cannot escape your thoughts, and so you begin to question, who am I without anyone else? simply be your questions evolve who are we and what can our movement when the rooms full of dancers again become Hello, let's go.
Thank you.